we're going to be joined by Chris Quinn from the Beer Temple. Please give it up. Yes. He's going to be out here a little bit later to talk about beer, but first let's get into our main story. Beer. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about beer. You know, ales, stouts, lagers, sours, sweet sours, IPAs, triple A's, scubers, bl blingers, bl blarfos, you know, beers. Just the regular kinds. But more specifically, we're going to talk about who you like to drink your beer with, because we're probably going to be hearing this question a lot. And of course, it goes back to this idea of which politician uh, would you want to get a beer with? That's the person who's most likable. Yeah, that's right. Talk show hosts, pundits, and guys in your office are going to be challenging you to think long and hard about which one of the buttload of candidates running for president you're going to want to get a beer with. It's a personality assessment known as the beer test, AKA Brett Kavanaugh's favorite test. <laughs> Prospective 2020 candidates are already trying to pass the beer test, like Senator Elizabeth Warren, very organically doing this. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna get me um, a beer. Hey, Glover, my husband Bruce is now in here. Um, you want a beer? No, I'll pass on the beer for now. You sure? <laughs> uh oh. It's not a good sign if even her husband doesn't want to get a beer with her. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth. But what does the beer test actually come down to? Uh, let's roll that CNN clip again. What, was, what did she say? Which politician uh, would you want to get a beer with? That's the person who's most likable. Ah, yes. The L word. Likable. See, getting a beer is associated with someone you like. Someone you'd hang out with. Someone you'd lift weights in the garage besides squee with. <laughs> But can I just say, this question is rigged, and it's rigged in favor of dudes. Because when you ask, who would you get a beer with, you could just as easily ask, which one of these people could I have a penis with? <laughs> it's, never, it's never, is this a candidate I'd want to get a skinny girl margarita with? Skinny girl margarita. It's the same as a regular margarita, except we made you feel bad about yourself. <laughs> Yes, getting a beer is automatically associated with hanging out with a guy. Look at any beer commercial. Love, football on TV, shots of Gina Lee, hanging with my friends and twins. Oh, and twins. Yeah, they're twins. They're two women and they came out of the same vagina the same day. <laughs> you know what, my dudes? Incest is hot. Yes. Twins. <laughs> Of course, women also drink beer. We love beer. But when we walk into the women's section of a store, we aren't visually assaulted with beer merchandising. No, when we walk into the women's section, we are visually assaulted with sequins that turn another color of sequins when you rub them. <laughs> but we want beer too, all right, you guys? See? Mm, perfect. I, I'm having it all. <laughs> now, now, if the beer test is actually about likability, it should come as no surprise that women aren't doing so good. As is the case with a lot of the ingrained expectations in a patriarchal society like the one that we live in, the rules are very different for men than they are for women, especially when it comes to this connection between sweetness and success. Because before a woman can be admired or respected, she first has to be liked. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I feel like before I can be successful, I have to be liked. I really do see that connection between sweetness and success, which is why I put candy under everyone's chairs. <laughs> really, there's candy there. Do you like me? Do you respect me? Please, please tell me you do. <laughs> why is everyone throwing them at me? Because this double standard is crazy nuts. I mean, in fact, a study by the Catalyst Group in 2007 called it the double bind dilemma for women in the workplace, quoting, women leaders are perceived as competent or liked, but rarely both. And guys, if you think I'm not asking about the unlikability of the male candidates, uh, shut up. Because when I googled Cory Booker and unlikable, the literal first thing to come up was an article from 2016 claiming that Hillary Clinton is unlikable. Also, Cory Booker doesn't even drink beer. At this point, we might as well start saying unlikable and girl interchangeably. I mean, it's a blatant and prolific double standard. It's in our feeds, our news shows, and in our headlines. Wow, the Daily Beast. You truly are today's beast. 
<laughs> and thank you, by the way, for bringing us back to Elizabeth Warren, because right after she announced her campaign, Senator Warren was immediately deemed cold and unlikable by Twitters and twats alike. Even Politico <laughs> threw some sexist shade. I mean, come on, Politico, why are they always getting compared? Warren and Clinton, they're so different. Even if, yes, if we played a game of who's that Pokemon using their silhouettes, it would be impossible <laughs> to know who the Pokemon is. But, but let's do, I can't do? But let's do the impossible and try and put politics aside for one second to just ask, why Senator Warren? Why does she evoke such a feeling of gut-wrenching unlikability? I mean, first of all, she loves dogs. Am I wrong? I mean, like 75% of her Instagram is her hanging out with a golden retriever. And look, I get that having an animal doesn't make you likable. Hell, Mike Pence has a bunny rabbit, but does he post videos of himself snuggling with Marlon Bundo to Instagram? No, he does not because A, if he touches anything that has known the power of love, he will turn to ash like Professor Quirinius Quirrell in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's May Philosopher's Stone. And B, no one has ever asked if he's unlikable. I mean, look at this good boy. And yes, to answer your question, of course his name is Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> also, Senator Warren inexplicably loves the show Ballers. She gives literal pinky swears. She's seemingly obsessed with parades. And then there's her face! I mean, that's just objectively speaking, not a cold, unlikable face, right? I mean, I, I know it doesn't have the warmth of, say, a uh, Donald Trump or the friendly grin of a John Quincy Adams or even the kind bounce of Richard Nixon's closely shaven anti-Semitic jowls, but come on! I mean, that's the face of a woman who bakes treats in the shape of hearts, which, by the way, she does in abundance, like a lot. She, all of it. Finally, she was the one who nevertheless persisted. Nevertheless, she persisted, basically became a global feminist movement, a hashtag, a children's book series, and a mandatory tattoo for all women. You should see mine, it's like memento all up in here. So she's a scrappy, dog-loving grandma who bakes heart cakes and loves the rock. And look, no one, myself included, is saying that means that she should be president, but why on God's formerly green earth would you call that unlikable? And also, I mean, she probably, she probably would be a good president. I don't know, something to think about. But maybe we should stop asking which candidate we would have a beer with and start asking which candidate will keep the earth from, I don't know, exploding so that we can drink our beers alone in the shower like nature intended. <laughs> Now, for his opinion on presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren, we now have senior primary correspondent, Wen Powers. Wen, everybody, give it up. Oh, Wen, good to have you. Thanks for having me, back. Okay. Well, thanks for being here, Wen. Uh, now, I'm very curious, what are your thoughts on Senator Warren? One word, Maggie, inspiring. I mean, yeah, Wen, I have to agree. And on a personal note, I just think that it's, it's really important to have a presidential candidate that people like me can look at and, you know, see themselves. When you're, you're a straight white guy. I mean, pretty much all the presidents have looked like you. I mean, the current president looks like you. Okay, first off, that was an incredibly hurtful thing to say. Okay. That's, fair. That's fair. And second, I'm not talking about silly things like race, gender, or sexuality. Okay, when you're on pretty thin ice right now, buddy. I'm talking about the fact that this is the first time I have been able to look at a presidential candidate and know this person also watches HBO's Dwayne The Rock Johnson's football sex comedy, Ballers. <laughs> and to people like me with horrible taste, that means a lot. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that you're only a fan of Senator Warren because she likes the same bro -y cable show that you like? See, people like you just don't get it, Maggie. You, you've been able to look at candidates that uh, like the same books you do or also eat vegetables. <laughs> But for me, this is the first time that I have, as a liberal, gotten to vote for a candidate that sees a show where Rob Corddry masturbates to a virtual reality video game and says, yeah, that's how I want to spend my Sunday night. Okay. <laughs> when, God, oh, why is it so important to you that Elizabeth Warren likes ballers? <laughs> because it's Elizabeth Warren, Maggie. Okay, if you told me that Rob Gronkowski likes ballers, I'd be like, yeah, that tracks. <laughs> that dude's an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot, it makes sense that we like the same shows. But if you're saying that Senator Elizabeth Warren, former Harvard professor, likes ballers, maybe I'm not such an idiot. Now am I? I mean, I can't argue with that, but when did you ever think that maybe Warren is just saying she likes ballers to appeal to voters like you? Yeah, I thought about that, Maggie, until I saw this clip right here. I read something you, you said recently, and I, I frankly found it a little shocking. Uh, and I need to use this opportunity to ask, which is that you said that you're a big fan of the show Ballers. Oh, yes! Um, now, we're, we're HBO guys. 
but Game of Thrones, John Oliver, Barry's really good, but is it The Rock? Is it the, uh, the, the whole thing? Like, why bothers? It is The Rock. <laughs> So, I know she has a great EPA plan because you can't be that thirsty and not have clean water up top. Uh, no. That was, that was nasty. Uh -huh. she, she likes ballers, Maggie. She 100% would like that joke. There we go. And not only that, but her openly thirsting for The Rock on Twitter worked. He said that she had a rock-sized hug coming her way. <laughs> Not only is she a fan of Ballers, she's already the president of the Ballers fan club. All right, so you're telling me it's not her student debt plan or her ideas on health care. It's the fact that she enjoys the same football show as you. Look, Maggie, I like those things, okay? But this is the first time that, for me, I have a candidate that likes drinking beer, watching garbage television, and, oh, my God, have Republicans felt this way the whole time? All right, I think that's enough. Uh, what, when powers, everyone? We'll be right back. Thank you. Custom the thinking of Robert Mueller as a kind of progressive superhero sent here from on high to do battle with the diabolical Mr. Orange. And though I am today building a great team of men and women. I have been called by so many people asking me to help ASAP Rocky. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, the table of contents uh, serves as a very good guide. Never meet your heroes. That's how the saying goes. They'll only disappoint you. Well, that's true, by the way. the Beer Temple here in Chicago. Please welcome Chris Quinn, everybody! Chris! All right, so Chris, I know we just talked a lot about politics, re-beer, but I'm skipping that politics part. I just wanna ask you about beer. Go for it. First question, what's the best beer? Uh, <laughs> right, uh, I think it all depends on the situation. Ooh. Kind of like what's the best joke type thing. I can tell you the best joke. <laughs> I haven't written it yet, but one day, <laughs> one day. No, I get you, nice. I see that you guys on your on the Beer Temple website, I'm getting ahead of myself, because we haven't even talked about what Beer Temple is, but you guys do curated, like, customized beer lists. Yeah. yeah so yeah. is there is there like a beer list you would do for drinking with Elizabeth Warren? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'd want to have some, you know, easy drinking beers mm -hmm. to start it off, and oh, then yeah. amp up the, uh, the octane so okay. we can see what she really thinks about certain about, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Maybe we yeah. can get Bruce involved. Maybe he'll get yeah. him finally. One exactly. Second. Okay, so uh, tell us about Beer Temple itself. What is it? It's a beer shop, kind of like a boutique -y curated beer shop, and then a tap room that just focuses on beer. The name kind of says it all. We do wine, but we focus on beer. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? Okay, so uh, I also happen to know that you are a, and you have to help me, with this pronunciation. I Cicerone. Know, he knew it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're a certified Cicerone? Yes. Is what it is. First of all, yeah. what the hell is that? It's like a sommelier for beer. What? It's essentially what it is. Okay. Yeah. So how do you go through this process? How do you become Cicerone? Well, really what you do is you pass a test and you okay. drink a bunch of beer blind. They answer, question, answer <laughs> questions. They tell you what kind of beer is it. Is oh. something wrong with this beer? Okay. It's actually kind of high pressure. Okay, then, it's high pressure. Yeah, I mean, if you've gone as far to sit down and go and have someone present beer to you and then ask you questions without you knowing anything, <laughs> yes, right? Right, exactly. You do it. That's uh, right. right. Um, so you're a Cicerone, please. Yes. I learned how to open up bottles, with bottle openers, a whole bunch of stuff. Right. Is this For someone who doesn't like wine, you're pouring a beer a lot like a wine. There I don't you know. Go. Yeah, <laughs> just dump it in. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Uh, tell me a little bit about this uh, this delicious ginger yeah. beer. So ooh, ooh! I have notes of ginger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> this is from a Illinois brewery, a small brewery oh, way down God. south. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely crazy. They go and they go into the woods and they 
forage their ingredients or grow them themselves and then throw them into their beer. So there's a lot of like dirt and wildlife I and taste stuff it. in it. Yeah. yeah, very earthy. But it's good. <laughs> yeah. They did a good job. Yeah, they did a good job. Okay. Mm. And this is their ginger beer. Oh my God. And it's nice and refreshing on like a hundred degree day. It truly is. Yeah. Um, it's tart though. Okay, yeah, it's tart. It's a tart one. It's a tart one out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris, I have another question. How, yeah. how, how do you come to become a Cicerone and to, be get, to get so into beer? Like, besides that it's delicious. Right, I mean obviously you have to drink a lot of beer, yes. think way too much about beer, care way more about things that most people <laughs> just take for granted and then decide to kind of make it your life uh -huh. and then question that and yeah. then just okay, keep just, going just anyway. Like, start a temple. Too late. We'll yeah. call the temple. Too late, just, I've already signed up for the test and then you just go. Yeah, I mean, you just described all my choices. Yeah, 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 oh, cheers. Yeah. Uh, Chris Quinn, uh, thank you so much. Everyone check Welcome. out the Beer Temple right here in Chicago. Please give it up for Chris one more time. <laughs> cheers.